So I want to start off with a little exercise of uh, people's perceptions. I know the answer. Henry knows the answer. He won't say anything. But I'd like to start with people's perception of which got the most votes. Okay? <laughs> so put your hands up if you think, I'm just going to go through the six. Put your hand up on the one you think got the most votes, OK? Does everybody get to have an opinion? Everybody gets to have an opinion on this okay. one. Everybody. By the way, we had uh, 11 votes. 11 people voted. Okay? So if you think, <laughs> all right. <laughs> if you think this option got the most votes, raise your hand. Okay. So I got three people on this. If you think this option got the most votes, raise your hand. I got one. Reluctant one in the back. This one. Okay. One. If you think this one got the most votes, raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> if you think this got the most votes, raise your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> And if you think this got the most votes, raise your hands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, it, so you guys are ranking uh, in terms of what you think people would vote. 8, then 10. Then three. Uh, no, and the and answer one. is, one. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, one. That got three people. So in actuality, the most votes are eight. So you're right on that. Sorry, Phil. Uh, then one. Got the second most votes. I'll go through the total number of votes in a second. And then third most votes. Okay, So you're pretty close. So let's talk about the actual votes. And I, I want to write down the, the votes you got because I think it's helpful to understand the weight of the room, that it's not just, I mean, the, the points are arbitrary, right? I said 5, 3, 1, and it might have been different if I used different ones. So I want you to understand actually where people are voting. So the. Actually, I, the most votes were, as I said, port option eight. Okay, there were nine of them, and they were five, one, five, 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 three, three. Strong levels of support. Lots of fives. Okay. Now, the second most um, was the city. And the city had eight votes. And those votes were one, five, five, one, three, one, one, five. It's interesting. You've got three fives and four ones. So the support is, there's support, but it's not like, hey, this is the option. Here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six fives, two threes, and one one. And then next is 10. And there are, interestingly, there are only five people who voted for this one. But look at the numbers. Five, five, three, three, three. Hmm. Now, in terms of the number of votes, Metro led option A here got six votes. So it got more than option 10 in terms of number of people voting for it. But the votes were 1, 3, 3, 3, 1, 1. So unless I messed up on my math, more people would like it as an, to stay in their array, but it's lesser support. Less people like it to stay in the array, but it's stronger support. And then the ones that we lowered before, understandably, were lowered for a reason. And option 5 only had two people vote for it. And it got a one and a three, so no one's favoring it as a first choice. And then option seven got three votes, and it's a three, a one, and a one. So again, no first choice. So I don't get to make any decisions with this group, but my sense is, is that we could actually take five and seven off the board, and no one would be significantly bothered, because no one's voting for it first choice. Does anyone object to just taking it down so we, we're, we're decreasing our options? Can I take a crack at explaining why? Because I agree that the rationale is an important part. And I, I'm just a listener here. 
but it's, it's, it's that point I made earlier. It sounded like people want to stay close to their areas of expertise and defer to any particular agency that might be receiving a responsibility to, to what aspect they would prefer to, to, to uh, have, which is the full operational and, and capital responsibility or just the planning and, and uh, the decentralized. I, that's the rationale that I heard. And if others want to help characterize that, it might simplify your job of, of explaining when you go before. Well, there's another rationale I heard, and it's a little bit less uh, high and mighty and a little bit more practical, which is if you're going to impose this on Metro, Metro prefers this over this. Yeah. And if you're going to impose this on the port, the port prefers this over this. Yeah. And so as a practical matter, you're looking at it and saying it may be hard to get the port to do it or it may be hard to get Metro to do it, but let's at least make it palatable for the entity if it gets stuck doing it. Can we uh, do you have any more of those slips of paper? I've got lots more, yeah. Uh, just an idea, maybe, maybe you're already going to do this, or maybe it's a bad idea. I wish we would have maybe done this in the first round. It's going to be a little bit weighted now that people have seen the outcomes. But could we do a round where people just put an X, one X, next to their veto? Yeah. Next to their veto? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could veto one thing. Just the 11 people who voted. Just the 11 people who voted. Can you put an X next to your, and so you got to decide. Do you want to spend it on yours or on somebody else's or what? But just yeah. one X. Well, the challenge with that is, is that knowing that this likely drops off, it allows Metro right. to veto the only Metro option. Knowing this likely drops off, it allows the port sure. to veto its own it would, option. It would have been great to do it beforehand. It's going to be a little wonky Okay, now. sure. But I think it would just be helpful for me to see what strength that it I'm fine. Be. Is that, is yeah, anybody close to it? Why don't we just do it for the top four? That's what yeah, just for the top four. four. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, yeah. So I want to know who the five people were that support the new agency for the campaign team. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, while you guys do this, because this doesn't require a lot of brain power to take a piece of paper and put an X where you know it goes, I want to ask a question to go back to a comment Jules made before. I'm the outsider. I don't understand political viability in this state, okay? I lived here for three years, and I was a law student, and I didn't pay attention to politics at all. I hear you significantly concerned that that's a dangerous road that doesn't get results. As the outsider, my question is, if four cities in the metro region and three counties in the metro region and metro and the port and three drainage districts and an improvement district all want it because it thinks it's best, what more would the legislature need to hear beyond that that it would engage in the conversation and think this might be a good idea? So, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, let me, I'll answer, let me just back up and say, there, I have two concerns with that option. One is a process concern, and one's a timeline concern. The timeline concern is really just, it's a long session issue, it's gonna be complicated, so that's 2019. We're gonna have probably tax reform, PERS, a bunch of stuff on the, on. Uh, the 2019 agenda. There's just not a ton of appetite for taking on something that's complicated and that could go our oxes. And if we can't resolve internally, even if we all are in favor of theoretically something at the legislature, if we can't internally resolve all the different issues that we want here, it's not going to be all that clear in the legislature and it's going to take some, some time to work that out. So that's 2019. Let's say it doesn't get done in 2019 because then on the process issue, you literally have exactly one legislator that cares about this. Uh, and she cares more about the statewide aspect of it than us. So she's going to figure out a way to leverage that into a statewide, a statewide bill. Maybe we like it, maybe we don't. 2019 passes, then you're in 2021. And you need to vote on the other side of that once it gets done. You need to wait for implementation. I mean, we're probably realistically looking at 2023 before there's a public vote before we do anything. So I just think it's a lot to put on a bill drafting committee in an environment in which nobody cares and there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. We care, but that doesn't mean they care okay. and prioritize. And it means that they could try to leverage other things in order to want to care about this. Right, and there's all sorts of other games that are going to get played at the bill, yeah, for sure. Well, the question I would ask, if I were a legislator, is don't we have enough 
agencies. Are yes. Mm -hmm. However, legislature, you know, we have support, we have a metro, we have cities. Why do we need something? For and no, and no legislator wants to vote for something that would be a referral to the ballot that could end up failing. They just aren't going to do that. So we'd have to demonstrate campaign support. We have to demonstrate. Well, so I, I appreciate the political prediction and all that because it's not really my world, but. My goal, or tend to me, means it's a new agency. The legislative path, pathway may be one way to get to a new agency, but I'm wondering if there are other ways to get to a new agency through joint powers agreements among the local jurisdictions that we have here today, as an example. So, to me, the goal is a new agency. It's not, you know, I just don't know about what the legislative imperative is around that. So, I'd just like to. Make that so for the vetoes up, they're pretty well balanced, although you'll notice that three got three vetoes and one got two vetoes, and the one that got two vetoes also got the most votes, so congratulations, Phil, you bought yourself a flood control project. <laughs> <laughs> so you bought a tricycle? So, Jules, what do you think? What does that tell you? Yeah, right, they're all equally bad. Two, two. <laughs> so does, did anybody veto an option and they haven't already talked about why they think it's a bad option? Like Metro's talked about why it thinks it's a bad option. You've talked as a support about why you think. The sit county's talked even though you're not up there about why you think it's a bad option. So who vetoed something and hasn't explained why in a way different than what we've already heard? I vetoed the city of Portland was because just on the east side, as I mentioned earlier, we're just not thrilled with having the city of Portland in charge of something that affects us directly, and we have no political input at all into how they run things in the city of Portland. So that would be kind of a killer for, I think, people on the east side. I think Steve and Nolan would probably agree. Definitely. It's a hard sell to say, okay, we as the if city. If Nolan says yes, he's admitting he's the third veto, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that you're a poker player. <laughs> You're putting us in the position of having to go to our council and say, go ask, you have to pass as our council to raise everybody's stormwater fee in the city and tell everybody we're handing it to the city of Portland to do something that's been, you know, let's face it, most people haven't flooded, so they're, you know, they, they're not educated on this topic like we are. But it's so a tough sell. If that's, would you guys mind uh, these county folks uh, saying who you did vote for? I mean, if you don't like the city, what do you particularly like? Is there a trend there that we need to be aware of? I, I can uh, expose mine. Uh, I voted for the port, and the reason why is I think it aligns with their uh, primary missions, which I see as transportation and economic development or business development or job creation. And as a result, it'd be a, big, a better sale if we had to go out for general obligation bonds and do other things with the uh, larger district than if we went with uh, Metro. Um, and I agree with Nolan. I went, sorry, Phil, I went with the port um, for similar reasons. Um, I like fewer moving parts, and if they're in charge, there's fewer moving parts, they run it. Second of all, they do have a regional focus as it is now. Um, three, they've done, they've had a very good experience with capital product projects and uh, maintenance projects and the things that they have. And finally, when I compare them to Metro, in terms of our political willingness to cooperate happily, we have lots of years of good cooperation with the Port of Portland, and my electeds have always kind of struggled with some of the Metro dictates and, and working with Metro. So I think on all four of those reasons, that's why we would prefer uh, the Port of Portland centralized option. And I voted uh, for the Port centralized first, but between the Port centralized or Metro decentralized or the county centralized, we don't have a preference. I mean, it's all another regional, kind of more regional government than we are, and you know, we don't have to vote on increasing rates. I'm going to assume that Jules vetoed this one. So there are two more people who vetoed this one. You don't have to identify if you don't want, but if you're comfortable, did you do, veto for a reason other than what Jules said? As a former legislature, a legislator who would never uh, want to predict what the legislature is going to do, the something you throw in there. Uh, so it doesn't sound like you think you necessarily both think it's a bad idea. You just know the body well enough to know that putting your eggs in that basket is really dangerous. Okay. 
Is there an argument to be made that there's a net reduction in agencies if consolidation of the districts is part of it? Ooh, sounds like you're working on the campaign. Yeah. First, have to, first have to make sure they understand drainage districts exist. <laughs> well, they don't even need to understand it if you say, well, you know, we're, we're down one or three governments here. Isn't that good? Check them out. We have a committee of elimination frankly, system here at You Metro could probably pitch it as consolidation of the four <laughs> into a new one, and, and uh, then it's a consolidation message as well. If what we're talking about is to create enabling legislation that could be triggered anywhere in the state, yeah, more so actually, because that's that's where it gets into nobody nobody's going to want to create something that's going to go out for a public vote that could fail. I mean, just having tried to do that referral route in the past, I've had to go into leadership with reams of polling, and you know, just you have to have all your ducks in a row, or they're just not. I mean, maybe if every if all of us are pushing in the same direction on exactly the same plan, that's possible. But if it seems at all complicated or risky at the ballot box, it's just ah, we got other stuff to deal with. So I didn't I didn't vote, but I have to say that um, you know we're not supposed to think about the political aspects of the campaign. But quite frankly, nobody hates the like they hate the other entities. I mean, you... <laughs> you don't spend a lot of time in city politics, do you? <laughs> you know, I mean, there... And, and people understand the self-interest of the port because the airport's in this area. Yeah, people yeah. People do give us credit for that. <laughs> they understand that. It's the best airport in the world, right? Is there a relationship between political accountability and... Well, I, you know, I think, I think that the, it would be a, a much easier sell to sell the port centralized than any other option that's up there. That's just my personal opinion, having worked on a few campaigns. The main negative that I've heard and heard about it is the, and I think, um, Ken, it was you who talked about people coming to the city and complaining because, you know, the, the connectivity between the average person and the port is tough. And how are the commissioners appointed? Are they appointed by the governor. Okay. So just from my perspective as an outsider, is it common in, in separate entities that have commissioners that you could have some sort of a stakeholder group or a board of advisors or something that could exist where everybody at the table could appoint someone to sit on a group that would advise the port. Does stuff like that exist in Oregon? Sure, um, but it would have to be, at least in our practice, it would have to be a different legal entity. I think we would, we would have to create a utility with a separate sub board or something like that. I mean, it, it's complicated because we've looked at it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's extremely complicated and there's a reason why we haven't done it. Um, but anyway, it's, and that's one of the uh, issues w that we recognize, the distance between the <coughs> citizens and the ratepayers and accountability at the highest level. So, so the other thing I was thinking about is, you know, we've all been living and breathing this stuff, but it's a relatively esoteric issue. I mean, it's been getting a little bit more publicity lately, but I really wonder in the, in the big world, you know, how many people in the Tri-County area would pay much attention to this. Well, I think even after Houston. I think well, actually with the port it. actually loses an opportunity for that broader community understanding and um, sense of how important it really is. It sort of tucks it away and let's hope it just sort of stays that way. Um, so I think we actually lose some power doing that. Uh, I was actually going to say I'll second Phil on that because I don't, I'm not involved with the port, but I do think there's an easier story to tell at the front end about the airport and why people should care. I think the long run story is harder to tell and I think it continues to make it not an area of regional significance but something specific only to the properties within that area. So I'll, I'll out myself. I, 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 so my veto was for Metro because I didn't vote for the port um, and partly it's political. Um, Partly it's structural. I, I, I'm not sure if Metro or the port or, or Multnomah County as an empty vessel can like just take all this work and absorb it. I think it's a lot harder than um, anybody's conceptualized thus far. And so for the same reason, I think 
we're likely stuck in a universe where we solve the IGA issue with the city leadership or we go to the legislature with a strong argument that enabling the port or metro or giving, I mean, I think making an argument that resolution A in our history at Multnomah County requires the legislature to step in and give us some authority that other counties don't have, doesn't make any sense. But um, if you, but looking around the country through the research that Henry's done, each of these kind of consolidated efforts come about through their own history. And so, you know, if you look at King County in, in Washington, there's a, there's a reason why it's at King County, but it's not because it started at King County. If you look at, you know, in, in Colorado, you know, again, it's like there's a reason why it's structured that way, but not because somebody built it that way. Um, and so in my mind, parking this at Metro, parking this at the port, parking it at Multnomah County is kind of like, let's re-engineer everything that we've been doing for the past hundred some odd years and change jurisdictions and I think that's fairly unlikely. Steve and Nolan? I was, you know, Phil, I, I know you said that preferred option is to go, you know, with the responsibility and the authority, but I'm wondering if there was a hybrid that kept, kept the implementation with the port but still retained, I mean, maybe this makes no sense, but retained the drainage districts to, to collect the fees that they're kind of currently collecting, that money would then go to the port. Does that make it politically any easier? If the port is really just trying to raise money more for the regional thing, it's less less of an ask or le perception wise. Then you don't really need the port. We have the same capital funding mechanisms available to us that everybody else does. So I'm looking for, if not, you know, what would not happen if it weren't for the port? Why, why is the port so important in this and, and what part of the process? So centralized, decentralized, I think decentralization just makes things more complicated day to day and it dilutes the whole message to the public when you have lots of subsets that are out there. Um, I, sorry for cutting in. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Yeah. Nolan? One of the, uh, the goals we've had is to try to look at how we can take and expand the base based on a benefit. Attended a uh, meeting at the uh, uh, port uh, where we had the uh, political leaders at, and uh, someone from the port, I don't know if it was, it may have been you, Phil, said, uh, uh, today the airport would be under four feet of water if uh, it wasn't for the, uh, the levees. What a great poster for a geo bond. Uh, I, I think just the connection, uh, with the uh, the port and the voters, uh, um, it, it would be strong enough that uh, that's why I'm pretty uh, high on eight. I was high on seven, but eight now. <laughs> well, looking at the board, you, what it really seems that we've done is, is we've identified one and eight as the viable, expedient, we can get by with it options, and 10 as the this would be wonderful, but it may be pie in the sky option. So let me. And I would articulate what you just concluded of saying let's move down the path of eight. Um, let's continue to move down the path of 10, knowing that it's probably got a five, six year lead time. Um, and de facto, the city is the fallback option. If, if those two fail. Well, before we get any motions. The city is the fallback option. No, I, and I think that. That's a legitimate strategy for us to potentially explore. I know Henry wants to try to tie this back a little bit. Is this where you're going? Um, or did you change your mind? I changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> Henry wants to do something that I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Go All ahead. right. So, so we have four options here. Uh, we have a couple of goals. We'd like to get down to three. We also need to have, sooner or later, a first choice. And so on the question of eliminating one of these, it would seem like we are on the verge of eliminating this one. However, when I now look around, that makes me a little nervous because this is the only one where I see drainage districts. And tomorrow, we're going to go talk to the drainage district boards. And it would make my job and Reed's job harder if we went to the drainage district boards tomorrow and said, news, you're all going away. But, but can I clarify that? Because I had asked a question earlier about whether or not they were subsumed as staff into these. I mean, I think it depends on how you phrase it a little bit. But these are the yes, board sir. members. Yeah. He's yeah. talking to the board members. So gotcha. I'm, I'm just realizing that 
it would probably be easier to go into that conversation tomorrow with at least one option where they don't cease to exist. <laughs> yes, Nolan. Um, uh, option uh, A uh, right now is uh, uh, centralized, and everyone knows that uh, I preferred seven as a decentralized. But if we head down the road uh, on option eight, and for some reason uh, there's still an option uh, for it to evolve into that decentralized, if when the port leadership and the uh, a district's leadership get together and begin to craft the uh, the final option. So I, I think seven could evolve into eight could evolve into seven through the process, and and I, I would just share that with them that uh, it's uh, still on the board because I think Phil, you would agree when negotiations start for the final product, uh, whatever option sells best would be on the board. Ten will look good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's look good good. point. Yeah. No. I, I, you know, I think we. I think it's a really good point. When you get down to talking turkey on this stuff in detail, things are going to change and move around. I yeah. mean, you know, there's elements here that are going to shift around. I guess I, I think you make an important point. I think we can probably get around that by saying, you know, if this really is off the table, then I think we can get around that by saying, you know, governance committee is still working it out and is presenting recommendations on September 27th to the larger board and, you know, hide the ball a little bit longer for past tomorrow. tomorrow, for tomorrow's meeting. Yeah, but, and, I mean, but, I'll, Reed, you might want to reflect on this too. As, as a board member, I'm really sensitive to their um, sense of who they are and the authorities that they currently hold in terms of uh, crafting their own destiny. I mean, they have the authority to stay in business yeah, or not. And, really and so I would be a little hesitant to go in tomorrow. Tomorrow we need to be a little humble, I'll, I'll yeah. just put it that way. We need to share the information and listen yeah. and well, not declare uh, priorities. I, I sense that the room though, there, there is an agreement on this around, around the table, but there is a general sense that the port may be a better vehicle than Metro amongst the majority of people in the room. And so one option is, is to take down three slash four and then to do port open parentheses drainage district drainage districts, close parentheses, acknowledging the role that they may still have a role and that needs to be determined. Okay. And the and other th thing, thing, oh sorry. To your point, Andy, you know, if you were to make a motion right now. Okay, we make a motion, eight, eight people can fall back to 10, one is sort of the option B, right? Well, all the brass gets in a room on November 3rd and uh, port brass can't live with eight and doesn't want it. Uh, other jurisdictions are, that have expressed it here are uncomfortable with the lack of transparency. That gets moved out. Then it falls to option one. We've already heard from multiple jurisdictions here who can't live with that, which is why I wanted to ferret out some of the vetoes. Uh, that then gets taken off the table, even though the city's willing to accept it, and then we're just into option 10. And it fe feels like those dominoes fall pretty quickly to option 10, um, which is fine. I just, the reason I've been hitting on it so hard from the beginning is that if it feels like that's the natural place where the dominoes are going to fall at the end, I just want us all to really understand how hard that path is and how coordinated we have to be on it. So, why would that be the one? I got lost there. If, if, if eight and if one. eight and ten and one are live options, right? I, how would ten be the one we end up with? Because you have you have strong you'll have strong vetoes to eight and one, mm -hmm. and you'll have no vetoes to option ten, mm -hmm. and it'll become safe harbor for everybody at that meeting. So <laughs> we we're down to twenty minutes, and we need to save yeah. some of that time so we can. Uh, focus on identifying some clarifications and follow-up questions for the FCS group. Um, I think where I'd like to go with the next few minutes is to say at some point we're going to have to have a, a recommended a first choice option and we've already talked about how they're all going to be hard politically. So the question on my mind is if this is say the recommended option are you willing to do the political work to get there? Like, who's going to volunteer to do the political work to get there? And, and would it, and, you know, or, or if it's this one, or if this is our recommended option, can we, can we muster the energy? Why are you asking that question now? 
or maybe I shouldn't. Uh, yeah. But sooner or later, we're going to have to have a first choice. And I guess my thinking is that I mean, don't I'm, we I'm concerned that choice? we might have a, a first choice that everybody's OK with, but nobody will uh, really rally for. Well, I, I, it looks like you have a first choice that people will rally for, and that's the port. And did I miss something? Well, but you might, but the voting system isn't scientific, right? <laughs> so. Can I take some of the pressure off for a first choice today? Yeah. For our purposes, I know you want to give us good guidance, and I appreciate that. We have a pretty good sense, because remember, the port was the farthest over of the, of the options, one with the broadest customer base. We've already done some summarizing. And it's easy to say, look, there it's easy to say there isn't a very big difference between financially between the port and metro and the county and you know there we can provide this set of numbers and we can provide the status quo and and that's good enough and we've got a model if the later decision makers change it to some other funding base it, it won't be hard to change our analysis so i i don't think for our purposes you, you don't have to get it to one We'll just take the largest area and the status quo, and that that will communicate to the decision makers what the option would mean. Well, I have another reason why you might not want to get it to one. Reed, would your comments make more sense before or after I share that? After. Okay. So I've worked on four or five multi-hundred million dollar flood control projects thus far, and none of them have succeeded by having a single plan. We've had multiple tracks on all of them. And then things fall off, and you still have a viable option. So I don't know whether you can do this under Oregon law, but could you start developing the funding from the port to create a utility at the same time you're the legislature saying, this is a great funding mechanism, but it's lousy from a transparency perspective. We need the legislature to create something that has the transparency. And then this moves into this if this is created. And if this isn't created, then this continues on as an option. Do, do we have flexibility to do things like that? Do we have to pick a first option and waste five years if it's not successful? Right? Well, so with that, that was, that's my, my thought premise. I don't know if you want to respond or read if you want to pick up on something from your comment. Well, I think we ought to think a little bit about the phasing of this. I mean, before we even get to that, my, my greater concern is we have two really important discussions coming up. One is October 4th with the rest of the project team. Um, and then November 3rd, which is with the bosses of this group of people. And so how, what we present to them and, and the message we send to them about whether they have voice in this process or don't have voice, I think we should be thinking about in terms of how we go forward with these. Um, and in my, from my perspective, I think having four is okay and letting and, and whether they're ranked or whatever so that they, they see th that the logic the big logic in each of the four, but they can still opine. And then you've got however many more there were that were rejected over here and some kind of explanation of what, what the people in this room are not the final deciders. And so I think we just have to be sensitive to how we have the discussions on both of those meetings, even before we get to the develop a legislative concept or don't or whatever. Great. I want to make sure this part of the conversation is over because this is, goes back, my point's back to something that Henry was starting on. Can I make one comment here? I don't know whether at any of these meetings you hear from the public concerned. And uh, if there's a way for them to weigh in because they're the ones who are going to uh, experience the consequences of success or failure and they may not be so concerned about who does it as much as that it gets done. Uh, and so I, if there is a way to hear from, you know, like the Columbia Corridor Association and a few others, that would be good. They will be there on October 4th, and Mary Helen was here earlier, but she's gone. So my, the point 
point I want to make. Henry brought up a good question, and that is, are, are you willing to advocate for whatever we choose? We're going to leave this room. It's very easy to, okay, I'm not on the table anymore, so good luck, Port, to chew on this and figure it out. I, I was thinking back to a year ago, uh, Phil and I uh, met with the head of um, the Secretary of the Army for uh, Public Works and the head of the Houston Flood Control District. And they were amazed at how much vulnerability we had because we have the second highest volume river in the country next to a major urban area with all with an extreme amount of infrastructure behind that levee system and how we could not have a funding system to address capital issues uh, so that we could protect the area just was crazy to them. The head of Houston Flood Control. Which has a hundred million dollar a year, I think it is. Yeah. And, and yet still is vulnerable, as we've seen this year. And so I, I don't think we have a, uh, a possibility of failure. I think we have to come up with a solution here. Um, so to Henry's point, um, when we leave this room, even though our agency isn't still one of the options, are we all still willing to come back and advocate for a solution uh, to this problem and recognize that we don't have the, the luxury of stepping away and not solving this problem? Um, I'd like to know there's still that sense of urgency from everybody in this room, regardless of what three or four options are on the table. I'll jump in. I think Jules did a great job of summarizing kind of how the winnowing is likely to occur. And I think this table, to your point, Reed, that we can't accept, if we can't accept failure, then I think the, it, it might be a mistake to presuppose how city cooperation looks, because there may be a way to slice and dice that work that addresses some of the jurisdictional concerns um, that are historic. And again, you know, you got to think about like we're at this point because of historic decisions that other people have made before us, right? Um, but the, the the reason why I bring that up is that uh, you know, if you're talking about the public, again, Carl, to your point, almost all of the folks who are going to vote yes for a capital funding measure live inside the city of Portland, and almost all the value that you're going to use or that, that you're going to draw upon for a property tax sits inside the city of Portland. And so I think, you know, I'm, I, I've continued to look at Ken and Michael about like, where should this conversation be going? Because, you know, not only do you have pen one and pen two, but you also have the voters, you have the resources. And I think- and we've had a population that's got to that. Right, exactly. And you've got the historical study or the historical story that says why it's important. And I have to run it, but I mean, I've just been a great conversation Last thing I will say is that I think with the city, and I'm speaking for the city, and I always hate to do that, we have to solve this problem. And if one of these options doesn't solve it, we are going to solve it because there's too much value, too much of our citizens, our taxpayers, the economy at risk to not solve it. And I understand why people don't trust the city, but I think when push comes to shove, if that's what we're set with, if that's the only thing that's going to happen. We are going to solve the problem because the uh, the alternative is not acceptable. Back to your point, Christian. So I'd like because you have to leave before before you walk out. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to Andy's motion. And given I know a lot of people have a one o'clock hard stop, ten more minutes. But just to make a friendly amendment to Stephanie's point that <clears throat> that maybe four options isn't a bad thing, and to Henry's point that maybe it's worth keeping some drainage district options on the table. Metro folks aren't going to like me on this, but. What if we said there's sort of tiers, that tier one is options one and eight uh, uh, as a, a tier one. Tier two is option three, whatever, three, four, the three, Metro I guess one. it is, three, keeps, keeps uh, drainage districts at the table and shows that our top two tiers are about immediate solutions now. And then we have as our tier three, uh, the, the the new agency, the legislative option, which doesn't preclude us from working on that in parallel with other options if we think that's necessary. I'd be more comfortable if uh, Ken was in tier two. Yeah. Two tiers. So Minor. Okay, I'm okay with that. Ken is mine. What's he said? 
So, so one and eight is tier one. And the friendly amendment to the friendly amendment is that mm -hmm. three and ten are in tier two. And, and can I make a suggestion about the funding structure? Since Ken's walking out, I gotta say this fast. <laughs> um, when you're talking about the, the uh, hybrid approach so long ago, um, it sounded like people. It sounded like if we assume uh, it's like a three-tiered approach, except that third tier is a property tax. So you'd have a. I'd like to assume that in our model, if, if nobody objects. So what you're saying is you'd have a fee. Yeah. You'd have a floodplain fee for the what's currently Thanks, the four districts, and then a watershed fee that takes in a little larger area to the south, and then a regional benefit fee for the rest of the area, which would be. The which would be a would geo bond. Be, the other end would be the first two tiers, mm -hmm. split between the. Uh, the, uh, the capital would be through the geo bond. Well, I think that's the only way to do the capital. That's the only way to reach the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want to write it up with one of those funding options, not Any objections to Gordon's proposal? Going, going. Good. Say just one thing off point since I've got everybody here on the state funding issue that we're trying to resolve. Um, rest assured, nobody's, we're not asking for any change in anybody's share. You may get an IGA amendment that takes the state out of it. They may still contribute funding through another vehicle, but your IGA amendment is not going to require anybody who is a partner to pony up any more than we've already agreed to last March. So stay tuned. If you want to do anything to help, call Nick Blosser and tell the state to get their act together. Uh, Jules, can I ask another outsider question of a former state legislator? I, I can ask you as well. Does the governor in Oregon have the ability to call a special session and would that mechanism help in getting the legislature focused on this issue? Yes, the governor has the ability to call a special session. No, the governor will not call a special session for this issue. I agree with that. Anybody have anything else that we didn't hit that you think is worth talking about or guidance you'd like to give Henry for the meeting tomorrow? And something you'd like to specifically see at a future meeting? Or questions and clarifications for the FCS group? Um, Particularly, so we have a few more minutes. Particularly, if you have clarifications that you want to see in their final product. What did we decide? We decided that tier one is options okay, one and eight. Well, I know, but I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear it back. I didn't, I didn't see a vote, so I didn't know. If oh. You need affirmation that way. So I, I think I where that. my understanding of where I things do. stand is that the city option and the port option are our top two and the Metro and new agency are our second tier, and we will meet again next Wednesday to discuss some more, and then we will take those options probably to the project team on October 4th. So yeah, and I would request when you meet next to talk some more that you do focus on how you want to message this to the project team and also subsequently to the elected officials on November 3rd. Yeah. I. I have a little bit of heartburn about having one more meeting between now and October 4th to hash over these same conversations again. Uh, if not everybody's there and not everybody can make time for it, but it may be used, useful to use that meeting tactically rather than strategically to figure out how we talk about this and, and really define what we yeah. are talking about. Okay. okay. Just to summarize what I'm taking from it, um, it sounds like what I'll do is assume that funding structure that I talked about. And then um, we can have three columns. I mean, we, can, we can have the status quo, but also um, the cities and the, and the port, as those are the boundaries uh, of the regional, potential regional areas. And it doesn't look too committal. You know, I don't want to jump ahead of the decision in the way we present the analysis. So I'm, I'm trying not to prejudge anything. But, but it'll give people a sense for what that impact might be, if that's okay. Is the analysis being presented to the full project team on the 4th, or is the 
further analysis only coming to the governance subcommittee? That's a good, good question. question. Haven't gotten there yet. Let's confer afterwards and think okay. that through. Yeah. There you go. It would be tough. I tell you, from, from my standpoint, it would be really tough to turn around and then we'll go out to in time for October. Okay. I also think that that level of detail may be distracting. Yeah. yeah. You might want headlines rather than analysis. I don't think we can do it. Or a presentation that When you were presenting, or Henry raised the question that there's certain kinds of consequences, benefits derived for the regional contribution uh, allocation. And the fourth of those four was transportation. And Todd, you said you might need to go back and do some more work to figure out what are the transportation consequences. I think that's an important refinement to the work you've done for that regional component because our strongest argument is transportation and PDX. And so having a good way of certifying the magnitude of that consequence, yeah. economic consequences. So the board has already done some regional economic benefit studies for the airport. They update it every five years or so. So we have a lot to work with there. Okay. Jules also mentioned there's some potential household benefits that might not have been quantified in our work so far. And of course, there's the whole construction benefit that hasn't been quantified as well in terms of spending and, and labor, construction labor. Well, I think it's very important to show kind of a big full potential economic benefit and then and then uh, you know when you get to the allocation we, we might only focus on one or two of those metrics but it's good for the public to see the full benefit so that 54 percent share might end up being 59 or 52 or something it's going to shift from more yeah, yeah. Yeah. change but once we take that into account for the story to see the, the full benefit good Okay, well, unless you guys want to do ballots on the almonds, the sesame sticks, and the pastries for the next meeting, I think we can thank you all for the time today, and I think we made really good progress, and look forward to hearing that you guys get to resolution. So have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Thank you all very much.